Hello, this is Dylan Anderson from Coda Bears, and today I'll be covering accessing the Epicor REST API and Epicor 10.2.500. And I'll also be showing a little bit of a demo and um, using the OData method to get back uh, data as well as like create a sales order. So the first thing I want to point out is if, you, if you're in your Epicor client and if you're in the active homepage on the bottom here, you see a URL. So some important things about this URL, uh, the first part of it here, uh, dev-102500, so that's my server name, yours will be different, uh, this will be basically a server that is hosting your Epic Core application, and then you'll see a forward slash, and then your instance name, so in this case I'm using E10 train, so it says E10 train, if you're in your production environment, you might see something like E10 prod, and then basically what you see, dot .coda bears dot local, so that's the fully qualified domain name, um, that may or, or may not show. If you're in the modern view, you'll see something similar to this in the bottom right hand corner. So keeping the server name and the instance name, so the server name dev102500 and then the instance e10 train, uh, keep that in mind and then go over to your web browser and then type in your type in a URL uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then this is going to be your server name um, this is my server name yours again will be different forward slash your instance name mine's e10 train um, and then forward slash api forward slash help forward slash v1 this last part here uh, would be the same for you to access the epic rest api uh, version 1 help page there is a version 2 that they are working on um, but today i'm just going to be showing you version 1 so to start off, when you enter this URL in uh, Epicor 10500, you will see kind of a help page that looks like this. And this help page has a lot of helpful information about, you know, basically what an Epicor REST API is. You can get a full list of the business objects here and a little bit of uh, API keys. Um, and then here is an important part. It talks about OData, OData uh, compliant data sources as well as custom methods and those are two types of calls that you can kind of do over your REST API to get back data or um, let's say create a sales order so like submitting data. So let's go drop down over here. If you're in an earlier version of 10, I'm not too sure at the version when this when this uh, switched but you'll see you won't see the sections broken out like this instead you'll have like one big section with um, just about everything in it. So if you are on like a 10 to 500 or you see a page like this, if you click on the BO namespace, so the BO namespace where you see erp.bo, BO means business object. So every screen in Epic Core and pretty much anything that happens in Epic Core really has a business object uh, that, that connects to that screen. The business object, what it does is it validates your data and it basically communicates with the um, database. Uh, so it's, it's, it sends data up to the server to the, to the database as well. So anytime that uh, you, let's say, try to create a new sales order and you get a pop-up that says customers on credit hold basically can't create the sales order. Well, that's because that is in the business object. The business object is validating that and returning it back and not submitting it to the database. So that's just a little bit of example of what you know, business objects are for. And in the Epic REST API, you can use business objects directly to send a data set to your Epic Core and save it to your database. And the business object is, is the way to go because you don't have to, any, if you're creating a custom application, you don't have to like pre validate anything because the business object will do it for you and return back response codes and stuff like that, letting you know, you know, hey, error, the customers are credit hold, or error, you know, you're missing. A field. So now we're going to jump over to uh, LAB namespace. So basically that stands for library. These are some tools that Epic Core may use without their application that they also made available for you in the REST API. Again, just so you know, like any time, it, these are all links and they take you to an additional page, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. But if you're ever curious about, you know, like what's the file store service do? Well, click on that and you can see kind of a list of methods with a lot more useful information about, you know, what you can do with that, what it does, and, and that can help you, you know, plan out uh, your custom application. Or if you're into using Postman to, to do some things as well, you can, you can use all this in Postman. I mean, Postman is a third-party software. Uh, it's out there and it's pretty cheap. So, next up is the 
proc namespace, so this basically means process, so erp.process, so this is uh, anytime you like submit something like for AP or AR posting, anything that's kind of like auto job closing, things like that, it, it's a process and you can actually use the Epicor REST API to trigger those processes. And then the report namespace, so report namespace basically anytime you print preview or print like a report, it connects to the report namespace, or erp.rpt is the report namespace, and then dot is, um, after that is your service. So again, if this is like a sales order acknowledgement that you're printing, or a job traveler, it'll be like erp.report.jobtraveler uh, svc, which stands for service, and basically you can use the Epic REST API to trigger reports to run. Again, you can click on these links to learn more information about each of these services so that you can use them in your custom application or working with them within, within Postman. So the business activity queries, so you can create a BAQ on your Epicor uh, server or on within Epicor and then use the business activity queries within the Epicor REST API to call your BAQ. I and mean, this has all the information, you know, basically how to call your BAQ. And you'll get back a set of data from your BAQ to be able to use in whatever you're, whatever you're using the Epic REST API for. And the security and custom headers, so unlike, you know, when, when you go to this API help, it asks for a username and password, that's your Epic Core username and password. Um, that's basically how you have to access the Epic Core REST API as well when you're programming and using the Epic Core REST API within your code. Well, instead of using that, you can actually create a token authentication to pre-get an access token for that user and use that within the rest of your API calls so that you don't have to keep sending and passing their username and password over the web. And that's a little bit of a more secure, uh, a more secure way of uh, you know using the RESTful services. So now let's jump back up to the BO namespace. I'm going to start a demo here. So the business object that we're going to access is called erp.bo dot sales order and this is the sales order service so this is basically what your um, sales order entry screens are contacting so once you look here uh, to the swagger page you'll see a lot of methods here and these are this is the OData, OData calls if you want to switch to custom methods calls you can click this link here to switch over there and basically custom method is can do pretty much everything an OData call can do um, it's just a little bit different. It's all using the post request, and they don't really have like get requests. But in the OData methods, you can do a get or post request. And get and post request, if you're not familiar with that, that's basically just common um, HTTP protocol. Uh, get is typically, you know, you're just getting data, like it's read only, you can't really modify the data. And then a post request is, well, you might be modifying the data, you're typically sending like a, a data set back up through HTTP. So we'll jump over in here to the slash sales orders. And if you click on in, on the sales orders get, you can see this is an example, basically an example data set that we would get returned back when we fill out parameters. So these are our parameters down here, select, expand, filter, order by, top, skip. I mean these parameters are kind of, if you've ever written like a SQL query, a select statement, a SQL query, so basically you select the fields that you want. So like if I wanted just company and order number to be returned in my data set. So company and order num. And then I did filter which would be something like company and then if you you can actually google this so if you go oh data URL conventions the syntax would be company EQ which stands for equals and then uh, single quote epic 06 and this is like my company ID, so I'm getting back the company and order num for all orders where company is Epic 06. And then top, I'm just gonna say top five because I don't want a huge data set. Now there there is a limit to I believe a hundred records. And so basically what it does is it breaks down to multiple um, different pages when you get your data back returned. So like you would have to do uh, a call to get the next set of data. So as you can see here, I have five records here with you know order num 5000, order num 5001. So that's an example of a basically how you can use this tool to you know test test out the REST API.
And then right here is another important one. So request URL. So this is kind of what you'd feed into your uh, within using within your code for the Epic REST API. And you can see right over here. So right after it's calling our full URL here to the service, it's then doing our select statement, our filter statement. And if you actually copy this, this is, this is a URL. So if you're using this in Postman or or like a custom application, it'll display a little differently. Um, but basically, when you copy that and put it in the browser, basically you're getting the JSON format of the of the data set that 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 you called for. So that's a a good example for a get uh, sales order. So now we're going to go over to the post sales order and basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a sales order. So if you click on this, so basically what this does is it calls to basically the update function. So we're submitting data to create a sales order. We're not getting back the data. And so if you're on the switch, if you uh, switch to custom methods list, you'll see some information here that says basically you can use a post request to get back data. And the difference uh, between kind of like a get and post request is you have a uh, a body of information or like a data set so it, and the best way to call this is either through this tool or if you're creating custom application then there's some libraries to fill in the body the postman has a section for body this would go into the the basically the HTTP re, the call body so um, there's not going to be really a URL associated it does not create a URL that you could copy and paste to um, let's say submit your um, request so this is an example of our data set. So this is basically what we'll, what we'll need to fill out in, in our parameters is the input. So I've actually gone ahead and pre-written pre -written this. So um, just like an Epic order, if you don't fill out all the fields that are required, you will get an error back saying that, hey, you need to have like a PO number or, or whatever it may be. You can also use this to update orders as well. So if I filled out an order number instead of putting a zero here, um, it would actually update an order. So if I copy my sample data set, paste it into the input field, and then click try it out. And just so you know, anything you do here in the Epicor REST API is live. So it is going to the Epicor and actually communicating it, and it's actually submitting data and all that. So if I went into my Epicor instance, I'll actually see that I have a new order number that is 5398. So make sure if you're playing around in the sandbox that you do go to a test or training environment. Um, again, as you can see here, this is my fold. So it returns back the fold data set. So this is the response it sent. So this is basically all the fields um, that are filled out. Uh, because I submitted the Epicor, some of the business object does, or uh, since I submitted the cust ID, the business object does do a lot of the work for me. So as you can see, the sold to and address name here, uh, the phone numbers here, the fax them, all, the, all that good stuff. So you only have to really enter, just like you have to. Um, enter in the UI what is required. You don't have to fill out everything because the business object does take a lot of that uh, stress off of your plate. Um, so again, as you can see, my order number is 5398. And if I went back up here to my get request, and I did um, order num is equal to 5398, and then hit try it out. I'll get back that I have 5398 and company Epic 06. And if you didn't want to use a select uh, parameter, you could just leave that blank and that'll return your entire data set for that order as well. So this concludes my lunch and learn for accessing the Epicor REST API in Epicor 10.2.500.